we'll take this opportunity. Welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. I've been on a couple week hiatus, uh, some professional obligations. Uh, worry not, I am back. I was trying to time this thing and actually put out my content right at the all time low, but unfortunately, uh, my obligation has has carried through. I've been pretty tired, actually, just um, you know catching up, and um, my heart is in multiple places. This being one of them, but not the only place uh, that uh, uh, that takes up my time and things that I actually look forward to. I think the highly on story is. Uh, a dynamic one at that. Um, there's a lot going on right now uh, to report upon, not necessarily with regard to the goings on of the company, albeit we do know that there's uh, quite a bit of churn to make this stuff possible uh, right here at the end of 2023. A lot to be excited about. Not a lot of news on the landscape, which I think really does hurt the stock. I really don't have a whole lot of explanation as to the strategery that's going on being deployed by Hylion. It would not be one that I would deploy. It's one that is uh, frustrating to me. Um, but uh, I, you know, if if they've got this thing figured out, I, I they've got an idea and it's theirs to screw up. Uh, my investment in Hylion over the last three years has been quite quite frankly very very simple in that this idea is a good one. It is a good one, and the total addressable market is big. The need for the product is enormous. The assistance of Hylion, not only through uh, Cummins and the certification that was just achieved here, uh, announced September 18th of last month. That was the last announcement from Hylion, and they've gone kind of ice cold on the line here outside of a what the truck interview that I caught with Thomas Healy and Dooner doing the interview. I thought it was a, it was a good interview. Um, you know, I, something that kind of puts me at ease a little bit um, is that either Thomas Healy uh, is as positive as anybody as I've seen in the public facing markets, which he is charged to do as the CEO, or he is the most naive CEO. Uh, and the verdict is out on either one, guys. I, I am a good judge of character, man, but I, I cannot unpeel this onion uh, and, and truly understand uh, what, if anything, is going on behind the scenes. What, if anything, with regard to old business is still active, alive and well, uh, you know, things that have transpired, things that are um, really coming to fruition with the company, with the remaining certification just around the corner, I anticipate, which will round out the certification and we can just damn stop talking about it, which would just uh, absolutely float my boat for all I'm concerned um, it, it's been a long time in the coming and, and quite frankly, whatever it has taken up to this point to achieve certification, um, it, it's, it's taken long enough. As far as I'm concerned, we, um, are still burning capital alive and well, um, with the capital expenditures and operating expenditures that the company is incurring, you know, what was once a positive, uh, attribute of the company being their cash position, some would argue still, uh, in fact, a positive attrib attribute. I am not in that camp anymore, as it is, in fact, a deteriorating asset. And if if Hylion can't prove out that they can generate meaningful top-end revenue to chew away at that uh, cash burn that they've got going on currently, um, they're just doing nothing but confusing the markets right now. And I, I anticipated 2023 to be just what it has shaped up to be. And that is a bridging year to, to hopefully better times into 2024. A few things that caught my attention during the interview uh, was the alludance to the Mod Center assistance in uh, what I portrayed to be uh, 30 truck installs in the Austin facility. And when Dooner actually asked him about uh, the opportunity to um, to to speak about the mod centers, Thomas Healy didn't say, "Look, it's a work in the progress." He actually said some of those um, th that work is actually going on at the mod centers, which is just key for me. It is absolutely key in this process, and really part of, and always has been part of my bullish conviction on whether or not this company can actually make it, and the acknowledgement that they are not on an island by themselves and have the assistance of multiple large players 
um, in the industry, uh, as well as what was perceived to be assistance through the Innovation Council, again, uh, with one of those um, uh, topics, multi multiple topics that I have questions on with regard to if those um, fleet trials are going on with those uh, respective fleets, Wegmans, Schneider, uh, Ruan, and many others that um, you know had orders on the books, those um, orders uh, really have been uh, have been ceased to be discussed uh, on the landscape, and uh, I have no reason to believe that they have gone away. Uh, however, what was once a, a very interesting topic to generate some very, very warranted churn uh, around the company, speaking to the interest that the industry had uh, for the Hypertruck ERX, um, we just haven't heard a whole lot on the landscape. Now, does it do them good to talk about that stuff pre-certification? You know, I, I really don't know. I, I think potentially Hylion could be building up momentum uh, to to let the floodgates go in 2024 and just chalk 2023 up as being that bridging year. I don't see any reason to to rush to markets right now i i think with the interest rates high and i think with the um with the path that hylion has put itself on uh as late as the recent one quarter but maybe going back stemming a couple of quarters from the previous or from the current uh, is their initiative to save capital. And, and I think that's a smart move um, in the face of what could be very difficult uh, markets if Hylion has to go to the open market to to raise capital with the cost of capital being uh, just astronomical and through the nose right now. So making all the right moves and potentially maybe even just using these remaining months in 2023 as as kind of that setup for a for a, a 2024 that I see to be huge. And that's not coming from me. And that's not my presumption. It's coming from what I actually heard from Thomas Healy, the CEO, during the interview discussing the potential for bringing the Carnot generator online and selling those units um, or making them available commercially uh, as early as 2024. Um, you know, I, I really kind of am past the end of my rope with promises being made, not followed through with. Technically, I wouldn't give highly on credit for zero sales uh, in the Hypertruck ERX. And, and, and I think it is a prove it story at this point. I think both of their products, the product of the Carno not being around at the onset, just being an absolute pleasure and a pleasant surprise to bring into their portfolio of products. Um, really is just discussion at this point until the demand in the marketplace is defined uh, and by Thomas Healy's admission could actually help to raise that top end in 2024. But, you know, again, it, it's it's really just prolonging um, what uh, was not anticipated, not by me. And I think there's a lot of people out there that would have expected that they would have been further along than what they were now. For those would-be share owners out there that would say, "Yeah, right, Ryan, right, Ryan, you're you're absolutely right. Tell it like it is." That doesn't mean that anybody is at fault. Um, it doesn't mean that my presumptions about how a company should unfold over time are actually going to happen in nature. As a matter of fact, in most cases, it doesn't happen the way you would perceive. Now, most people would pull chocks and sell the stock and get the hell out of the way. Um, that is improper application, and it is not one that has any place in stock market investing, especially when you're talking about a, a you know a, a pre-revenue company. I, I you know I hesitate to say that, but in all actuality, Hylion has failed to generate revenue of any meaningful substance up to this point. Um, and and so for the work that should be being done uh, behind the scenes and, you know, all the Twitter banter that would give Hylion a nod at any pass, uh, I, I'm hesitant to do so uh, based on track record. And until they start to really prove out uh, on, on their concept, um, I, I think I'm more bought into their concept than industry is at this point, right, in, in all fairness. And we need to see some demand um, churn up in this industry when we start talking about mandates that are, that are coming down the pike. 
you know, we've seen this with industry before. Industry will cry wolf and say, look, you can't provide me a solution that, that is actually economically viable. And and the the, the Hypertruck ERX has done nothing but prove out uh, to be what used to be, a, a, you know, a two and a quarter, maybe a 250 or a 275 um, MSRP has now expanded to 400,000. Our, our fleet's going to to make that purchase and make that leap of faith into electrification. Um, and, and, and that's a big change. And those are fair questions. And those would be questions that I would have for the CEO on the next earnings call coming up for, for Q3. I just don't, I don't see those questions being addressed. I don't see them being answered. And the, the silence on the line uh, certainly is, um, uh, is, is of a concern to me. A lot of people out there are not concerned one bit in that they are rest assured that the Thailand team is working uh, day and night behind the scenes uh, to make the CRX roll out and make these products available to so that they can rev, uh, realize their 10 million by the year's end. I'm not really sure how those presumptions are any worse or any better than mine. Uh, being a little bit more in the skeptical camp and being in the, you know, show me story. Okay. Uh, and that's just my perspective to help really bring to the ground level the current share positions and the share positions that by any account are down uh, and, and shareholders are are suffering. And, and to, again, come to a public facing market and expect some sort of reciprocation. For me, a, a podcast interview spot for seven or eight minutes really doesn't move the needle for me at all. Uh, I don't give really any credit. I appreciate the comments that were being made. Uh, the interviewee, he always does a great job. You know, Dooner kind of like, he seems like a one of those guys that he understands trucking and he understands really how to ask those grassroots questions. That I do appreciate. And equally as much, I do appreciate the answers given by Thomas, but, uh, you know, it, it's it's a little too little. And, and, and the question is, is it too late uh, at this particular juncture for Hylion to crawl out of this, this hole that uh, they've built for themselves? A lot of people would say, ah, oh, this is completely normal. I mean, the stock can go down to 10 cents. Guys, I'm here to tell you that it's not normal and it's not normal at all. Um, I'm monitoring other companies that are absolutely grinding and and don't have any problems uh, releasing information to uh, the public uh, as much as Hylion. And, and I don't really see what the big secret is. I don't really understand why they can't make a goal to make an every other day post to the public audience. I mean, this stock will go up uh, on no news, uh, but for the most part, it goes down every day on no news. And, you know, once every 10 days, it'll, it'll, it'll increase in value a little bit, uh, only to give it back over the following 10, 12, 15 days. I mean, this stock goes through swoons of downswings to where it's down multiple days in a row. Um, is there something awry with the stock? I, I don't know. Am I surprised in this environment that Hylion and many other companies that I cover uh, are being subjected to poor market conditions? Not in the least. Do I blame Hylion for what's going on in the current stock market? No, I don't. And Hylion is is actually well positioned, and I'm quite certain that they're um, they've got a lot of thinking heads there. Um, they've got a lot of uh, strategy uh, that I'm being presumptuous in that if they just look at this holistically, you know, they could really come out of this with guns blazing into 2024 and really make an impact. And it's going to come down to a, a few very specific things. And the number one thing that it comes down to is the scariest thing for a company to have to realize after many, many years of anemic uh, growth is that at some point, Hylion is going to have to realize that they're going to have to sell product. Come on, Ryan, that's a little bit hard over. You don't think that they realize that they have to sell product? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Verdict is out. When I watch the tone and the tenor and I watch the receipt of, of, of questions, um, it was the biggest put off 
that I picked up on on the interview. I thought the answers from Thomas Healy were good. I appreciate the Mod Center. I appreciate the um, uh, hydrogen fuel cell update collaboration with Hyzon. I appreciate all that. That's all great. But you know what struck me um, is is the con continuous laughing and having a good time making $1.1 million per year at the expense of shareholders that if you're invested in this company, 100% of share owners are down in this company. Yeah, you've lowered your cost basis. And for that, I give you credit for, I'm one of them. Um, but you are down. And I don't sense that there is a real acknowledgement that there is a neon green dumpster fire going on at Hylion. Now, you can take that in a couple of different ways, my friends. Um, I choose to take it from the bullish perspective in that there is a lot that is forthcoming, a lot that cannot be discussed at present, and we in due time will be made privy to those goings on behind the scene. My fear, my fear is this, my fear is that they don't have jack shit going on behind the scenes, and now they're panicking because they are burning against a mountain, what was a mountain of cash to the tune of around $600, $700 million when the SPAC dollars were paid to Hylion, and they have recouped zero. They have recouped zero, and it just speaks to the demand over the product, and nobody knows better than Hylion with regard to the receipt of where they are in the process, they've had a few people in sales resign, which is a bad sign as far as I'm concerned. Am I the one that's being naive? We will see. Uh, but I throw that out there just as an opportunity to review both sides of the argument and look at where this company currently is. Uh, in its ability to uh, potentially find that business that Thomas Ely alluded to over the last three years, as far as interest in the space, um, I, you know, I, I'm I'm one of those realistic fellows, and and I would say this: if Hylion is sitting on a product that is due to be certified, not yet certified then what's the point in rolling out a bunch of interest orders and a bunch of news releases on interest if they don't have a commercially viable and certified product just yet, right? So I would think as the stars aligned with this project that we would need to get that final certification out of the way before we actually look to the horizon and start to really set this thing in motion and really start to ramp up um, what should be a very interesting ramp up to commercialization, how that rollout happens, um, who is involved in the rollout, who is going to be placing orders, who will be handling those orders, whether it be Austin or the mod centers or a combination of both with the idea of segueing uh, partial responsibility and over time full responsibility to the mod centers. Um, you know, the, the, that that unraveling or that unwrapping of the commercialization of the Hylion process is quite frankly what we've been waiting for for the last three years. And up to this point, again, it would have been futile to focus on an order backlog queue of 2,500 orders, 5,000 orders, 7,500 orders, 10,000 orders, if none of those orders could be reached. Furthermore, if the proof and validation needs to go into the mod centers and then eventually getting um, getting dubbed a tier one supplier, which being named a tier one supplier, I've said this before, is an absolute game changer for Hylion. If that happens, um, the, the, the stock will re-rate because that is the uh, tried and true validation that they need to ensure that when an order comes in from a Rowan, whether it be a newer existing order or any of the other fleets out there by that matter, to Peterbilt for the new build slots that would be, be made available in 24, 25 and beyond as appropriate, 
that those powertrains would be available for purchase uh, upon the initial quote uh, to those respective fleets. And then we would have a better idea of, of where those numbers would shake up. And that would be the eventual ramp up from what is now, um, you know, in the tens of orders up into the multiple hundreds of orders. Uh, that doesn't get us to the thousands of orders, in my opinion. Um, I, I really don't think Peterbilt is just going to step aside and allow or immediately allow, right, the ramp up of those orders to come off of the OEM line uh, until they've gone through a few years potentially of turning out a uh, product, but it's not going to matter at that point. Hylion is going to have its designation, and, and, and if that is granted, it will be a culmination of everything that we have known about the company since day one. An electrified powertrain solution. Thomas Healy has said many, many times, this is what they do, okay? And to be able to provide those powertrains, I will encourage you guys to keep your um, keep your eyes open and your expectations muted and expect the unexpected when it comes to this company and the rollout that is going to be forthcoming over the coming years. Uh, just like Carno, um, I called it before Carno, and I'll call it now. This company is not going to look the same in a year. Mark my words. This company is not going to look the same in five years. Okay. So the idea here is that we put a line in the sand from now until an inevitable future. Yes, but not knowing how that future is going to unfold for Hylion. <laughs> And really just deploy and expect the unexpected philosophy when we observe the pedigree of what we're investing in now, which is a lot of good. It is fraught with good, very, very intriguing product portfolio. I don't get these people who say that Hylion doesn't have a product. It's as if they haven't studied their 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 product offering. They haven't studied their technology and their patents. They haven't studied the reaction of the powertrain. Look, man, I'm not suggesting that Hylion is not a buyout or a takeover target. I'm not suggesting that. But to suggest that somehow Hylion doesn't have a product or even to go so far as to say that any company like a Hylion that boasts being an electrified powertrain provider will not find its place in this market in the time that we find ourselves against a class eight trucking space that is looking for alternate solutions, guys. And I think this is more about the bottom line cost savings than it is about the uh, the, the 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 secondary benefit of going green. Okay, I think it provides optionalities to the fleet. I think when the price of diesel goes down, I think fleets will opt for diesel on certain routes. But what about looking at specific routes? And looking at the optionality to make a secondary or even in some cases RNG, CNG as a primary fuel source and even looking at those routes that they have and earmarking some of those routes for BEV application, hydrogen fuel application, and the like. I've always looked at this as an optionality play across the board. This isn't about Hylion taking over the Class 8 space. It never has been. It never was. It was always about looking at the electrified powertrain and its ability to run on a fuel that would be the optimal fuel for that specific route and not always subjecting the fleets to the... Uh, price dynamic fluctuation of diesel all the time. We've just went to war this evening or yesterday. It's been actually three days now in the making, but just now rolling out. How is that going to affect the price of crude oil? How is that going to affect the price of LNG even to throw, to be fair, into uh, the fossil fuel discussion? And I think fleets are looking at, at least if I was a fleet, it would make sense to me. And I'll be quick to admit that I am not, but to provide optionality and move to the fuel that is the most conducive at the present time and not be subjected to the whims and price fluctuations of one particular fuel just seems to make sense for me. 
one of many bullish convictions as to where I think if Hylion is going to screw up this rollout to commercialization, it's going to be their screw up. And it's not going to be so much that the product is not available or it doesn't exist or it's a bad product. It's going to be more on the Hylion side in their failure to execute and actually roll out with some level of efficiency. So I think that's super important. What to expect as we enter into the closing out Q3 and rolling into the fourth quarter of this year. If I can speak openly, guys, I've done everything I can possibly do up to this point in producing content that has covered a story that I feel like is going to make waves and it needs to. The, the transportation space, not only here in North America, but also globally needs a solution, okay? It, it doesn't necessarily need to be Hylion. And if Hylion mucks this up, there will be another company that comes behind them and gets it right. And I I could wake up tomorrow and see that Cummins has uh, uh, acquired Hylion and be perfectly happy with that because I think right now, based on past performance, okay, and, and I'll put pause to future performance just for a moment and look at Hylion's inability to forecast uh, pitfalls to forecast market conditions, albeit as bad as they have been. And I do not blame highly on uh, for those things. But if you look at their disclaimers list, it's really interesting to read their, their disclaimers. If you read their disclaimer, you would never invest in this company because it talks about COVID-19. It talks about changing uh, market dynamic. It talks about the, the receipt of the product of the Hypertruck ERX. If you really want to scare yourself, and I think all informed investors should read all the literature that's available out there in the company, read the disclosure at the at the very bottom of all highly on news releases. It's usually longer than the news release itself. So if you get to it, you'll know what I'm talking about when we're talking about you know the the risks involved with this company but i i think in all fairness as we're looking to unfold this story over the the coming months here it's going to be incumbent upon shareholders to really look at you know what what Hylion is um looking at as far as their attributes that they're going to put to work in 2024 how the Hypertruck ERX is going to be received by the fleets that are assisting with the fleet trials, um, how well uh, those uh, initial responses that we have received from drivers and fleets alike that have been overwhelmingly positive in my mind. They have been overwhelmingly positive, and it's going to be interesting to see if they can have that positive reinforcement reciprocated across a number of different experiences the fleets are going to take and put into the rigor of Class 8. I think that's going to be super important to, to, to understand. I really want to discuss with you guys the the project and the highly on uh, um, content that's been put out. I have made an aggressive posture on if you drew a chart of the stock actually going down over time, okay, just like it start from here and go this way for you guys. Yeah, I'm going the opposite. So if you start up here and you you look at the stock price as it's gone out, gone down, and you look at the releases of the videos that I've had over that same time frame, you could put those videos on that. Um, all the way down, okay? Uh, I I mentioned on a couple of videos back or maybe on the live stream that when this company starts to move north, I may actually retract from this project. And I was the recipient of one of the coolest comments that actually picked up on me stating that uh, as a pretty bold move and actually gave me some funny advice actually that I've actually thought about myself. Um, this has never been about an I told you so story. Um, I'm holding highly on to the rapture. Uh, highly on's not going out of business, my friends. I, I hate to break, break your bubble. I hate to, um, dispute the bears who would just rather see this whole camp, uh, pit pull up tent and actually dissolve away and close the doors to highly on altogether. Highly that's not going to happen. 
Um, this company's in it for the long haul and they're not going anywhere. They do, in fact, have plenty of capital to at least get them an overlap into what is going to be a very interesting next couple of years. But the statement was pretty awesome in that that they picked up on uh, my retraction of the product as the uh, Hylion story actually started to materialize and there started to become a, a lot more interest in the stock, which I foresee happening. Um, I um, encourage you guys to understand and appreciate the work that has been turned out by myself. There has been a lot of hours uh, in research behind the scenes. Um, there's been a lot of contentious conversation. Um, there's been a lot of mad tweets that have gone through, probably not reflective of my personality and who I am. Um, sometimes I get judged on that stuff by a three, four liner on Twitter. And um, in all fairness, uh, I, I have the right to, um, to, to, to portray my feelings in the way that I, I, I feel fit at the time. Um, and there have been multiple times in the evolution of this company where I've been downright angry at the uh the rollout um and and how the lack of information has been pushed out to the grander audience but i will say this uh, i expect that when hylion starts to find favor i expect that there are going to be content creators that uh, absolutely jump on the bandwagon i think we'll have some reemergence of content creators uh, that come back and all of a sudden find a renewed sense of vigor for creating highly on content on YouTube. Why? Because the attributes of this company, as much as we go back and forth and as much as the contentious conversation happens and as much as the name calling and the accusations fly, the, the attributes of this company really has not changed that much over the last three years. And I will dare to say over the last seven years, I think the progress has been marked. Uh, I think the evolution of the company has been, uh, quite frankly, stunning over the last three years with the advancement of the technology in where they were and where they are now and more freakishly where they could potentially go into the future. But the attributes, the very reason why and the essence of why we've invested in this company, total addressable market, the product, which is phenomenal, um, the team that I hope executes uh, and, and gets this product out in the way that can actually start to generate some uh, organic churn as opposed to manufactured churn. As much as I talk about news releases uh, in a dry market, how much of that stuff would have actually moved the needle now, guys, right? So my expectations are somewhat muted in that I don't think it really would have um, gone very far in what I have perceived to be an absolute onslaught on small cap stocks as a whole. So why would Hylion be any different? I mean, I, I'm seeing some certain glimmers of light in small caps, but for the most part, the entire space has been absolutely obliterated. So why is it fair to suggest that Hylion somehow is going to emerge from the ashes and just start kicking ass when every other stock is getting absolutely blown away, right? But my anticipation of the progress of the company is um, going to be made left up to me, but uh, it would just be me to be above myself in my independent application to walk the hell away from this project as soon as I feel like the good work has been done. What I mean by that is the last thing I've ever wanted on YouTube was to people for people to tune into my message and actually hear something from me that has actually hurt people, right? Um, and I think that um, there's more good out there than I think a lot of people are given credit for. Um, me personally, if I could have just given you that right stock to make everybody wealthy, um, I would have given it to you. But here's the irony in the whole thing. I don't believe that that stuff exists. And I do believe, based on my monitoring of the YouTube landscape, that the trick is very, very simple. Come onto YouTube and sell people that you have the goods or I have the goods enough to set myself apart from the next person insofar as I can provide you stock picks that are going to be life-changing. 
Uh, my friends, I'm here to tell you that that stuff does not exist in nature. If the Hylion project ends up working out over time, which I believe that it will, I will have had to walk a road that very few were willing to walk. That is for sure. And there will be study on the project. There will be scrutiny on the project. Um, and there may, in fact, be rigor over the, the product to ensure that everything was on the up. And I would rather just prove out to suggest that 100% of my content was released on a downward trajectory and let the vultures come in and pick away at the neon green carcass on the way up because my good work at all, ha, has already been done, okay? And for those that held true and realized that those attributes didn't change in three years after all the accusations and the name throwing and quitting the Discord group and all of that stuff, at the end of the day, Hylion ends up becoming something that we expect it can become upon proper execution and that is providing electrified powertrain solutions to the class eight space and you know is it too much to ask is it possible is it needed um is it possible but <laughs> that's the that's the key question right when i look at this i mean these guys had just a fantastic idea with tons of support um, are we going to be looking at a, a a regretful situation five years from now when we look back on this and say, well, the stock was a dollar then, you know, it's at three dollars and thirty cents now. Not a whole lot's changed. Um, certainly, a lot more stress watching the ups and downs in the stock market. If it can only materialize a three dollar and thirty cent stock price after five years of you know achieving funding out of public markets as well as. Uh, private funding uh, or whatever avenue Hylion did because they an over anticipated their um, their place in a marketplace that they underestimated or overestimated, right? Uh, I I don't I don't see that happening. Um, this idea is not so complex and not so novel to suggest that what we know now about this company trading at a dollar 10 today close to all time lows as i'm filming this video is that this idea is a good one from the simple sheer fact that it provides that optionality that i speak about for to move freight from point a to point b ah it's a terrible idea ryan thomas healy's a bad guy it, it, none of those accusations really outside of just taking away focus from what I want investors to focus on is the fact that this idea works right now as we speak, as indicated by the certification that was just achieved under 30 days ago, 30 days. Does that warrant a bump in the stock price? Obviously not. The stock has come off another... Oh, 10, 15%, I guess, since the announcement just last month, right? And me, I focus on the reality of this being a product that really could change the landscape. And if Hylion were out there by themselves saying, look, we have to make this happen at the Austin facility, I would have never invested in this company. It has always been the involvement with Dana, uh, it's always been the involvement with Ryder. It's always been the, its involvement with A and G and the net, network of compressed natural gas in this country, uh, and 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 it's always been the relationship with with Packard Peterbilt in that the uh, idea of taking this powertrain from the production facility in Austin and shipping it to the Peterbilt facility was one of the main drivers behind my investment thesis. Why? Because that's the business lean model that we all bought into when we looked at this opportunity. Uh, now, this bridging phase that we're in right now to get these initial units out and book some revenue coming into the year's end, uh, closing out Q3 and entering into Q4 may just be exactly what Hylion needs to get that jump start to let the dominoes start to fall. If the company cannot deliver on that and the ERX is not the product that they promised it to be, then the company will falter and go away and there will be somebody to step behind this. 
um, and actually offer this solution and make it viable in the marketplace. Um, I, I truly believe that. So I, I just want to I want to wrap down this video and I, I kind of want to point out the fact and I'll highlight the comment that was provided to me because I got a little chuckle out of it because it was a pretty cool insight. It was only one person that picked up on that when I said it because I do not want to be known for a stock picker. Um, you, you can accuse me of being a family man. You can accuse me being uh, of being a, um, a serviceman, um, devoted father wonderful coach, um, a, a subpar content creator on YouTube, that's fine. But I am not a stock picker. And I've been involved with financial markets ever since I was 15 years old. I have the pulse of the market. Um, I know when I evaluate companies, what companies have that pedigree to actually make it with no promise of return on that insight. None. Zero. You want to become a steward of this game. You have to fully immerse yourself. And it is a life's passion for sure. But the last thing I want to do is sell somebody on my insight insofar as they go act upon that insight and believe that my insight can supplement for their lack of insight. That is not what I'm looking to do. And that's the very reason why when the timing is right, I will close the door on this project. I will wrap it up. And I will um, uh, digress back to fundamental investing, which in fact does scale to the masses, uh, whereas this project absolutely does not scale to the masses. Um, and um, it, it'll be a, a job well done. It'll be fun to sit on the sidelines, do um, uh, infrequent updates on the progress, uh, all, all uh, earmark milestones, and I'll only put out content when those milestones are met, and then we can do a review from the milestone back. But uh, until then, uh, it's going to be really just tranching through this ice age, which has been 2023. Uh, and looking forward to the horizon based on some of the comments that we were able to glean from the interview that we got over the last month, hoping that the um, uh, news releases are are amped up a little bit and are a little bit more forthcoming. Um, you guys get on Twitter, man, blow that stuff up, man. It's your free right to get on there and, and humbly request. If you want to be nice about it, look, I'm accused of being an asshole when I uh, solicit for those, you know, my, my, my request is justified. I want more forthcoming information from this company. You can't go silent on the line for a, an entire month when you've got the stock price at all time lows. You just can't do that. You can't do that. And again, I might be wrong on that presumption, but I don't believe that I am. And I believe that there's others out there in the same camp as me who don't mind providing a little bit of business scrutiny out there for a company that has no business acting like a small cap company or a mid cap company when in fact it is operating right now at penny stock levels. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in to this weekly Hylion uh, update. I appreciate the latitude over the last couple of weeks. I appreciate the continued support on the channel. We probably have a couple of months left before I detract from the product product or retract from it. Uh, so let's continue to enjoy our, our time here. Uh, I'm accumulating shares. I bought more shares this week. Um, 500 was the block this week uh, at 107. Uh, and we'll continue to look at opportunities as they unfold in the marketplace. And as they become available to me, I will share those with you. Guys, subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. As usual, uh, hit the bell, notification, thumbs up on the video. Helps support the message that we're putting through on the Independent Investor Channel. Again, appreciate the hell out of you. All the support. Uh, go neon green and good luck in your investment future. <laughs>